Hello everyone, it's Sizzle Collapse, and I'm back yet again playing Direwolf 20. In between episodes, I did do too much. I did a little bit of crafting, a little more work on this setup here, and we're going to finish off here now. Uh, I did have to add more cloches. Why did I take damage? <laughs> I have no idea. Anyway, um, I had to add more cloches. Uh, they have been changed, so they're not the same as they used to. The recipe, as you know, changed. Uh, but their speed doesn't seem to be as fast either. Before, two of these, two cloches, used to be able to fully kind of keep this uh input you know all the inputs totally maxed out definitely cannot now so i kind of had to add more <laughs> and uh yeah it seems to be going pretty good now and uh it's pretty cool i'm pretty sure it kept the inputs i might be overdoing it to be honest i think it did either that or i'm producing enough to make about i don't know run about four generators maybe six <laughs> I guess we'll see over time. I'm going to get these generators kind of set up, and then I'm going to try to run them under load, not right away, in time, and then see how the output goes. That's why I play these packs, basically, to learn what I can kind of push in an expert pack, right? So, anyway, that is that. Uh, a lot of people too keep telling me, too, you can make more power with uh, advanced generators. Oh, I, I, I know you can. I mean, I played with advanced generators in Sky Factory 3. I produced 50,000 RF with a double setup. I also produced, what, 12,500 EU with a double setup at AOE. I, I'm very aware of advanced generators. That isn't why I play these packs. It isn't about just getting to the end game, you know what I mean, rushing it or anything like that. I do that in expert packs. These kind of packs are for learning what's changed in the current versions. And that's why I do these things. And so things like these closures have changed. These I don't think have changed too much, but anyway, we'll kind of get to that stuff as we go. Uh, we're going to set up a refinery here, kind of get the next step done. So the refinery, pretty easy to set up. We're going to kind of just hammer it out, kind of keep it in the center. And uh, get her done. So you kind of want this kind of set up right here. That'll do that. That's kind of the frame. And these were extra uh, scaffolds because I think I didn't make enough there. Anyway, we'll get to that in a couple minutes. Uh, we'll need our pipe. And you'll need five of those down the center. Just like so. Uh, heavy edge of earrings in the front. Uh, the oil output is going to be right here for the diesel. And uh, then we're going to want the light edge of earrings in the back. I think the light edge of earrings, this is where the power sits. And then we're going to want the iron sheet metals. These are kind of the tanks, I guess. We just need eight of those. There we go. Bam. And uh, this, it doesn't matter which side. You can just pick a side, basically. So I could put it here if I wanted to. And just, uh, bam. That'll form the multi-block. Or I could break that. And I could throw it on the other side. And bam. So that is the refinery. That is how you set it up. Let's get some power into it before we do anything. So let's grab some hardens. Uh, the power is right there there's the dot there so we're just gonna run the line i guess out of this one because well we got more enough power in this line so it should be good although once i get this refinery set up it's gonna start pushing our current power so uh we have a large buffer mind you i'm not really worried about that but uh once i get oil in there i'm uh, sorry ethanol in uh, plant oil it's gonna start pushing the limit upper limits of our power so i need to get that taken care of pretty quick Let's grab that and some servos and we're just gonna use the fluid ducts here the only reason i'm using fluid ducts instead of the immersive piping is uh these things don't auto push so these ones do so you can just put it there and turn it on i think i can make them auto push with or auto pull with a redstone signal maybe maybe i don't know it's been a while but uh we're just gonna use these ones we don't have to think about it throw that there and bam i was gonna start pulling the ethanol that's cool. I think I turned this off too at one point, didn't I? Yeah, because it's out producing this one by quite a lot. And that's normal. That's just because the seeds don't produce as much uh, liquid per seed as the uh, fermenter does per, you know, melon slice. So that is normal. Let's go here and there. For an optimal setup, you'd actually want two of these squeezers. And you'd probably be able, like I said, run about four generators with enough cloches. Relatively easy. Um... Although it is, it gets large really quick. Uh, I guess we just need a servo. Throw that right there. And bam. That should start producing diesel. Right? Yep, we're getting our diesel. It's going to get backed up really quick because we don't have any way to send it. So let's actually go make a buffer really quick. We're probably going to make one more of those fluid tanks. Uh, the black hole tanks there. There we go. I could see through my floor for a second. Let's go here. I should mention too, the... Um, the book for this mod has crashed me about five times, so I'm going to go and check the GitHub when I'm done uh, and see if it's a node issue. Because otherwise, I need to report it. Because if I leave that book open for too long, 
It's not even, it's just too long, right? Especially if I'm looking at the page with the animations, I just suddenly crash. And I haven't looked at the actual crash log, which I probably should, but I'll do that at some point and uh, check out the GitHub. Anyway, that should handle that. I made a couple more power cells too, so well, one more anyway. Let's do that. And grab one more. Bam. Bam. That'll handle that. And we got some power cells here. Yeah, I think I already have one in there, so that should be good. Had an extra one because with the way I changed the cloches. Uh, oh, I only need one power cell now. I only need one anyway. I could have guessed I could have written ran lines, but they just seem so cheap. Anyway, let's grab this. That there. And this will auto input straight into it, I think. Maybe. Don't make a liar out of me. I thought this uh auto outputted. Oh, could have swore this auto outputted. I guess I'm crazy. Okay, well then we'll need uh, a way to deal with that, I guess. Really? Input, output, lock inventory. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I guess we could just do it this way. Let's uh, do you. And just sit you on top. And that should do it. Oh, that's a black hole unit. I am such a derp. Okay, we'll use that later. I totally just wasted uh, some resources that uh, I'll use later. I mean, I'll find another use for that black hole unit. But uh, we definitely need a tank and not a unit. So let's go black hole tank. Go here. Oh, that's just a void. I was hoping there was a way to convert them. Let's go here, black hole tank. Bam, need another frame. There we go. When I started this pack, it was using the frames from Tesla. And now it's not. They must they changed that last version though, so I should be quite used to that by now, but every time I look at them I still keep going, is that the right machine frame? Anyway, let's go here. And this should work fine now. So let's put a black hole tank. There we go. It's getting its biodiesel and that's what we want. Uh I'm gonna need some placement blocks, so let's go back outside. You guys get to see this lovely loading screen over and over. <laughs> let's go uh grab some cobble. There we go. Yeah, boom. It's nice that it loads pretty quick coming on the inside anyway. But uh, let's kind of figure out how we're going to do this. I'm going to clear this out. Let's grab all this jazz. So we'll need all that, all that. I think I needed some extra scaffolds. The rest of stuff is going to wait. I was going to put the generators in another machine. That's why I made another compact machine. But I've decided not to. That should be good there. Let's grab our cobble. And uh, kind of float it up here somewhere. Probably be the easiest way. I would like to line it up so the fluid inputs are right there. I think that is dependent on which way the radiators on the generators go. So we'll kind of cover that in a second. That's, uh, I think that's high enough. So let's go here, 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 maybe. Yeah, I think that'll work. Then I'll need some placement blocks. So let's do that. Might as well get them both set up at once. There we go. And right here. Then the same thing. So you do have this little, you know, little line thingy going on. But uh, we can get rid of those. There we go. And there we go. I can't fly right now. That could be a possible issue. Grab some fluid pipe. And I guess we'll just need three of those in between those. So that should be good. Oh, I didn't actually set up the other side. I'm such a derp. Let's uh, fix that. Bam. These ones are pretty expensive because they take... Uh, that's not right. Um, how much? 13 of the heavy machine blocks. The heavy machine blocks are actually expensive. Uh, they take a lot of materials. I think you got to spend about four steel per uh, two blocks. No, four steel. No, eight steel per two blocks. So you got the four steel here. Then you got another four here. And it's copper and electrum. So quite a few steps. But at the same time, you're only going to have to make so many. Anyway, that'll handle that. Let's get all of our fluid pipes in. There we go. And right there. I actually already know I have this completely wrong, so let's fix it. <laughs> it is one of those things. I'll have to go down and get those in a second. Because uh, I have them backwards. Okay. Trying to make sure that I have my fluid inputs on the right end. So this end here is going to have the generator block. So it should be right there. There we go. And the fluid inputs are going to go off that. So we're going to have the fluid here, fluid there, and these will be the inputs. So I won't have to run a big long line, then I'll have to fix the backs of course. So one there, 
one there, that there, and then we can just rinse and repeat. Get this all finished up. Boom and boom. So that's the bottom floor after all that, you know, hard work <laughs> and dedication. Uh, then we need on the back of these a three by three of these radiator blocks. Boom, 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 boom. Do that on both sides. There we go. I don't think these are too bad. Yeah, just a whole bunch of these. Well, it is a fair amount. I guess two per. Lots of the generators. Not the radiators. The radiators, what are they? Radiators were just, yeah, steel and that, but you get two per. Again, fair amount of steel, but uh, not a big deal. Then we're going to grab some of these generator blocks. Boom, boom, boom. And that right there. So that is that. Next, we just need to get the heavy engineerings and the uh, redstone blocks in. So you can set them up either way. But uh, I want the redstone block to go here on each one, just in case I need to add a lever for any reason. And uh, do it that way. But we're going to make just a little kind of U here. Or a C, I guess. A whole bunch of that. Throw all those blocks in. That one's not needed. There we go. And then we just need to make a little plus side here. So, And that should actually finish it off. For both. There we go. Then I should be able to come down here with a hammer, hopefully. Just hammer. I think it's this block right here. There we go. And right there. And that's our generators. They are all set up. They're good to go. And, uh, we really just need to pump fuel in them and then uh, start pulling power. Which is pretty cool. We already got 110 buckets, so that's just flying along. Uh, it's going to take a lot to drain that out. I'm going to use the hardens again. They should be more than able to keep up. And uh, I guess we'll just go this way. Oops, I'll have to fix that one. Get you. And. Resident Servo. And bam. Those should be running. Uh, well, they're not going to run right away. These things don't really have much of an internal buffer. So they don't actually turn on. Uh, I just need to throw the power cells on. I need to grab the other one real quick. And that one already has card in it. But I'll have to go up here. And you see here, you got these three little dots. Those are actually how you pull the power out of it. Now, it works a little funky. If I put just one connection, it'll be able to drain all 4,096 out of one connection. The second you add a second connection, it kind of splits the power up into groupings, I think, of three. It makes it so it's like 1,300 and something per connection. So you're actually better off with the one connection as long as you have the uh, kind of power to support it. Anyway, that one's fine. That one already had power in it. I guess you'll see it turn on when I hook this one in. Once I get the card hooked up, bam, there's our link. Bam, because uh, these things are a little loud too, but not a big deal. Why didn't that turn on? Oh, because it's not set to input. There we go. It's going to turn on. Once the buffer gets filled though, it's going to automatically turn off. It should anyway. Are you going to turn off? I guess there's a little bit of power drain. As long as there's a little bit of power drain, these should keep going. So uh, I should set that one it's into. And they're pretty smart. They will throttle themselves. So if they don't have to send power anywhere, they'll actually turn themselves off, which is pretty nice. One of them's going to keep running, though, right now, simply because these machines right here are actually using about, uh, I think it's about 1,600 in total. We don't have an easy way with an inter I.O. really to see uh, power being pulled, which is something I'm not used to. And I don't want to have to hook up screens or monitors, like power monitors to every machine just to see the inputs and outputs. I, it's a little unfortunate, but uh, at the same time, you got to deal with it. And uh, I just kind of want to watch the oil. Is it going up or down? It is going up right now. Of course, only one's running, but uh, I think it's going to be able to keep up anyway. Well, it's hard to tell until those backlogs go on anyway. But, uh, we'll monitor over time, and uh, yeah, I think it's running right now. It's running fine, and everything's good. And we should have, like I said, another 8,000. Well, it's 4,096 times 2, so... What's that work to like 8192 or something like that? Uh, more RF that we can use. So that is pretty cool. And that is diesel. And that is done. <laughs> and okay, now that diesel's all taken care of, we've got that all finished. You can kind of look in here and see that Compact Machines really doesn't like the multi blocks. <laughs> It is a giant mess. Uh, the next thing we're going to get to working on here are these material stonework factories. Uh, we're going to pull them into a drawer system and uh, kind of do it in a nice clean way. We're going to keep them stored up here. And uh, we got to deal with a little bit with the overflow issues, I guess, with retrievers as well, because they don't like handling blocks very well. But uh, we can do all that really easy with these machines. We're going to end up using 
two different ways. So first thing we're gonna do is limit what items come out of each machine. And you can do that. You can just kind of go here and this one. This one I don't want cobblestone. I only want one type of each item cutting out of all these machines. So cobblestone's gonna be coming out of all three. So I'm gonna kind of disable it out of two. And you can do that with these settings here. Uh, that should all I have to be able to disable here. I'm gonna disable stone on this one. And I'm going to disable gravel on this one, I guess. And I'm going to disable that sand on this one. And that should handle that. Uh, that way we only have eight materials coming out. And uh, that's going to kind of help us fix things here. Oh, I did mess up something here earlier, kind of looking at these settings. It's kind of neat that you can actually decide what exactly comes out of each side of this machine with these settings. I really do like that. Um, yeah, so that's getting power again. And these ones were paused, right? So let's unpause these. Boom. And I actually want to break this because this never worked properly anyway <laughs> so uh yeah we're gonna get to this we are gonna use impulse item ducks they're actually gonna help a lot and kind of deal with one of the issues so let's grab that let's single them impulse i want regular impulse there we go um, i'm also going to use drawers here so we're going to use oak trim and we're actually going to make a framing table just so we can kind of you know pretty up the drawers a bit so let's do that let's make a framing table Let's do that. Bam. Let's grab that. Uh, we're going to need some Minori as well. So let's grab an iron. I'm actually going to automate this recipe while we're at it. Let's grab two of them. And I guess run them through, well, one of them through here anyway. Let's do that. Oh, did that get it? Yes. Okay. Need to set the filter. And this is just because I keep making those iron casings. They're not even iron casings. I think they're just called casings. And uh, we're just going to get that done. So bam. And bam, so iron equals nori. Great. And uh, that doesn't belong in there. That belongs in here. I really want to finish up these alcoves. I'm really determined to do that now. I keep saying I'm going to do it. And just not getting to it. So we're going to kind of work towards that. And uh, that's kind of the plan there. So we're going to need one more nori, I guess. We can test the recipe in the process, which is fine. I heard it zap. Should be good. And now I can make our casings. Great. Uh, with that, I'm going to also need some frame drawers. So let's grab those. Those work in the uh, framing table. Probably going to need nine of those. We have eight items here, plus I'm going to deal with one later. I think that's right. Grab our framing table. This table is pretty neat too, so you can just make your drawers kind of look however you want. So I could just, uh, you know, put, uh, well, I guess it belongs there. You see there, it looks like that's what the drawer will look like, but you can even customize them further. So I could take that, put that there, and then it changed the border on it. And then, you know, I could take cobble, put that there, and that changed the front. So you could actually use kind of like three different textures. And depending where you put it, it changes different parts of it. But uh, I just want them to look like this. So we're just going to grab these. Oh, I guess I need these in here. There we go. Let's do that. And we're also going to need a drawer controller. So let's grab that. Drawer con. There we go. Drawer controller. Bam, grab you. Make a couple comparators. And uh, we got a drawer controller. Just thinking what else we need here. Uh, storage bus. We're going to need a storage bus. So let's actually make some pistons because I haven't automated this recipe yet either. So I might as well do it. There we go. And there we go. So that's good. And anything else? Well, we actually need to make the storage bus, I guess. So let's do that. Storage bus. There we go. Bam. One more recipe we never have to worry about. That's fantastic. Damn, there we go. And I'm just thinking, well, we have to actually make it, so let's do that while I'm thinking. Storage bus, fantastic, sweet. Okay, that should be finished. I think that's everything. So let's grab you. Oh, Fluix, we need some Fluix. And I might as well grab about 30, because uh, I think I'm getting low again. And hopefully a couple are done right away, they are. That should be good. Okay. One last thing. <laughs> it's always one more thing. Just some cobble just for some placement blocks. Uh, I guess i got to grab this over here because we do have the machines producing them. But at the same time, there you go. There you go. And that's just because how drawers are kind of picky when you place them down. This will just make my life easier. So we're going to take the drawers. I'm going to throw them down kind of like this. Uh, and here. So there you go. So it'll be like two, uh, two by twos. I guess it doesn't really matter. But uh, that is how I'm doing it. Gonna grab this drawer controller. Probably throw it right here. Uh, I'm then gonna have to grab 
one of each of these items. So let's grab a stack of each, I guess. There we go. And you, and you. And just get them in the drawers and get them all kind of sorted out here. That'll work. Uh, maybe some sand. Maybe some gravel. And uh, the glass. That'll handle that. And the last ones are stone, stone, polished stone from uh, extra utilities, which you can actually make here too. So I figured why not? Because it's all free materials. It just takes a little bit of power. There we go. Then I handle that. It's all sorted out. Let's head to the top here. Let's grab you. Let's throw... Not there. That'd be a silly place. Let's put you right here. Then find us some channels here. Doesn't really matter how this goes. As long as it doesn't go below it. There we go. And there. And I don't want to touch that main one because that'll mess up my channels upstairs. But uh, that is pretty good there. Did I grab the item duct? Yes, the impulse. Sweet. I am going to need a retriever as well. And I'm going to have to use uh, impulse here. That is why I use that. So let's grab that. Just, I'll explain that in a second, I guess. Let's go grab the retriever. There we go. If I don't use the impulse, it's not going to be fast enough. Um, basically, the way the retrievers pull is kind of... They just, well, this one's going to try to pull something every 0.5 seconds. If this item is not in the drawer controller in one of these drawers in 0.5 seconds, I'm pretty sure it's going gonna to keep sending it. So, uh, yeah, hopefully this works. I think this will work. I'm going to find out here real quick, though. Uh, if this thing turns red, it means what we did is useless, and I'm going to have to find a different setup. I did not test this, so I'm hoping this will work. And uh, I guess I won't know until one of them hits 2,000. So I'm probably going to let that run a bit. It shouldn't take too long. It'll kind of happen while we're working here. And uh, we're going to get something else. But that should handle it. Uh, if I use slower item conduit, the item won't get to the inventory. Uh, by the time that item is uh, being set, the next one is being sent. So it'll kind of make a mess of it. And then you'll end up with that thing where the um, retriever or servo turns red because there's an item stuck in it. And I think that's going to handle it. <laughs> I did not test it. I guess we're going to find out. Probably cobblestone that'll get filled up first. Once it's filled up, we'll know for sure. Anyway, let's do this. Let's grab you. And you. And just uh, so I can cover that cable. There we go. That's good. That should handle that. Uh, next thing we're probably going to do is break down this setup here. Because I don't think we need the enchanting setup really anymore. So let's get rid of that. And then we're going to automate this ore processor. So I can automatically start processing our diamonds and emeralds. So I figure that's a pretty good idea. Let's go here. Uh, let's go in here. And we want to keep that one. We don't need that right now. I may set them up later. But let's grab you. And need some kind of block just placed down so I can place this. So let's go here. Let's go here. And here. Uh, we're going to need, let's see here, an export bus. So I'll grab one of those. We're also going to need an import bus. Grab that. We're also going to need some flux, some more, I guess. That should handle that. And uh, which one was this? This was the export. I needed my import. There it is. And uh, that should be enough to automate that. So let's go and grab an export bus. Oh, we'll need a capacity card, but that's not a big deal. Put that there. Uh, I guess an import bus on the back. Boom, and then get it wired up so it actually has some channels. So maybe right here, here, and here. And, oh, that's got to go. <laughs> no point having cobble there. If I'm going to pretty it up, I must well pretty it all up. Not leave uh, pointless cobble around. There we go, and there we go. It's not red yet. We're good. Half of me thinks it's going to, and half of me doesn't. Those uh, ducks behave a little oddly sometimes. Let's go over here. And that should automate that. We should just need, like I said, a capacity card. Grab one of those. We're going to need acceleration, which I made a big batch of these, so we should be good to go. So let's grab five of those should be fine. And we we'll need our ores. So let's grab a diamond ore and an emerald. So there's an emerald. What is those ones? Man infused diamond. I have so many diamond ores now. I need to actually switch the diamond lens over to the one that uh, gets us more iron. <laughs> That's actually more beneficial to me right now. 
Uh, capacity card, because diamonds aren't an issue anymore. Uh, let's throw in three speeds in this one and two on the imports. There we go. And that should handle that. Yes, we got items coming in, we got our diamonds being pumped out. And that's exactly what we want there. And they'll just get automatically break down. It's totally random. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm actually wasting diamonds. Let's uh, grab our fluid. I was wondering why we were only getting one each time. <laughs> Help if I uh, grab this and throw our essence up here. Boom. And uh, turn that on. There we go. And it's set pause, so it's not coming in there. It's coming in now. And we should start seeing better numbers here now. Yeah, there's four. Yeah, way better. Way better. Fantastic. <laughs> that would have been bad. Would have wasted a lot of diamonds there. Anyway, that automates diamonds and emeralds, so they're good. Anytime they come in the system now, they're just going to automatically get pulled there and processed. I keep looking at that thing, waiting for it to tell me something's wrong. Let's get rid of you. Uh, next thing I think we'll get to is probably the compactor. Let's get the compactor done. Because I, I must as well make uh, automatic plates. So let's do that. For any recipe, we need to make plates. I don't have to deal with those hammers anymore, which would be great. That, and we'll need a piece of iron. Just to test a recipe, we'll do the iron plates. There we go. I think that's the one I've had to make the most of so far anyway. There we go. Bam. And that's that recipe. So we can just, no, nope, that'll have to actually go in the compactor. Let's actually grab a interface. Which we can kind of grab on the way. There we go. And get this thing set up here. I should be able to set it up right there. The interface should be able to sit right there. Let's just set the sides on this puppy. Uh, we'll want in and out on the back. And I guess that's it, right? There we go. I guess this thing is really easy to automate. So let's grab an interface. Let's uh, throw a lot of them back and make it directional. So bam. Uh, there we go. Send it that way. That should be it. So let's throw the recipe in there. So bam. Try this out. Can we make plates? I think we can. I believe in me. Let's just make one for now. And bam. That's going to make a plate. Set the press, which it should be. And took it out. So that works there. That is still sending items. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, the reason I was using impulse is literally they have to get to that drawer controller before they have a chance to send another one. Or you'll end up with two in the same pipe with the same item. And it'll end up with one more extra than it needs to to actually fill up the drawer when it gets to the end. At least that's my theory. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I think, I know it's going to mess up with regular item duck for sure. I don't think it will uh, with the faster ones. I guess we'll find out. Uh, what's the next machine I want to automate here? Actually, let's kind of finish this off with some casings. Make it a little prettier. Here we go. I should have a facade here. I should just take here. Might have to do another casing recipe, but that's not a big deal. And okay, the last machine we're gonna kinda automate here is gonna be the extruder, because we did break that down at one point, and we need to set it up. So we might as well throw that out there, and uh, then I'll always know I always have obsidian. So I'm just gonna throw it right there, I think. And uh, check the sides here. That actually probably works right there. <laughs> let's go grab some clay. We're gonna need another sink, so let's grab clay. We'll need five of that. I'm gonna have to get myself more clay soon, because we are getting low finally. Uh, throw it down here, aren't they? <laughs> let's go here. Let's make some terracotta. Uh, we're also going to need a bucket, aren't we, for water. I don't have an easy way to get water yet. I'm going to have to automate buckets of water soon. Anyway, let's grab a bucket. Here we go. Grab you. And I guess come out here and grab this jazz. There we go. Got a bucket of water. And our terracotta should be done, so we should be able to make our sink. There we go. Bam, and bam. So there's our sink. Uh, we'll also need another storage bus, so let's grab one of them. Storage bus. There we go. Did that? What, whoa, that was weird how it did that. Anyway, that's fine. And we have Fluix. We have that. Just think of what else we need. Oh, a tank. We're already a tank for lava, right? <laughs> that's how these things work. Let's grab a uh, ender tank. Don't have any in the system. I'll need a cauldron, of course, so there we go. There we go. And well, after this, we'll have another alcove done, which will be nice, actually. Really awesome. And I could use this last frame drawer. And anything else I need? Just look at here. Do I have hardens on me? I do. Awesome. 
Okay, let's grab a storage bus. Storage bus. There we go. I guess we'll just throw it. Do I really want to show this obsidian? I should have put it in the center. We'll just put it this way. This will be fine. I'll deal with it. Just me being a little picky, I guess. And I'm going to have to get behind that. So let's go in this way. There we go. And come here. So water. I had an input on the bottom and the side. So I could set it up either way. I'll just put the water on the bottom. So let's do that. There we go. Oh, I'll need uh, another servo too. So I'll do that. Grab a servo. There we go. I have one there. That works. Hardened is fine. Grab our sink. Guess do that. Guess we do not need that connection way over there. Where is my wrench? Right there. Break that connection. That's pretty sweet. And what is that? Oh, sneaky torch. Where did I get a sneaky torch from? Uh, I haven't been putting down. Well, no, I was doing those yesterday on downstairs. Anyway, let's go down here, and uh, that should be fine. So we just need the servo, I guess. So let's uh, pump in the water. That'll handle that. The item's gonna output to the top, right? That's fine. And then we could just put the lava. I don't have a lot of area to work with here. Maybe I'll do it out the back instead. No, I guess that's fine. Let's go here. This one has to be hardened, so let's make sure it is. There we go. And I guess we need uh, red dye, because that is my channel. Can, can, can I get through there? That'd be great. Come here. Uh, we'll just use some beetroot. That sounds good. I think it's red, red, red. That's usually what I set my lava to, so hopefully that is what it is. There we go. And boom. That'll handle that. And we just need to get it on the back of that. So I guess if we're going in there one more time. And getting this done. So should be able to put you there. Uh, we'll need that servo. So let's grab that. Oh, we already have it. That's fantastic. Boom. Can I get it right there? That'd be great. Put you here. And that should be good. Our lava shouldn't be a problem anymore because I do have a chunk loaded too. So that is pretty cool. Finally went in chunk load that, that stuff. I put a spot loader there. That should just start producing uh, that until it's done. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, cable facade. I need a storage bus too. <laughs> I kind of skipped that step. And I guess the last thing we need to do is actually just throw a storage bus on this drawer. So we could probably just throw that. Do we have enough channels? Yeah, we got more than enough channels. We'll just throw it right there. And I guess get this hooked in. Throw it right there, maybe. And then set this to a priority of two. Because I want this to be the new home for Obsidian. And downstairs, priority of one. I will have to break the drawer that is down there. Like I said, the same as for the other ones. Kind of get everything moved around. And uh, that should be that, actually. I'll need a cover here. Well, that's not a big deal. Go here, here. And uh, make ourselves a cover. So I think I have one of those structural things in here, don't I? Yeah, these things here. This is what you actually use to make the covers. They are pretty cheap. Just that. And then you can just mix that, mix that with a casing. There we go. Bam. You get six of these casing covers. Or what is it? Yeah, casing cover. There we go. Throw it right there. And uh, that does that. That finishes that alcove, which is pretty sweet. And uh, I really like how this is looking. <laughs> I really like that one. That one turned out well. That's pretty cool. And our gaping hole's gone. Fantastic. That is awesome. I'm actually really happy today. Like, this is awesome that we get this all finished. And it looks like this is going to work. This is going to work, I think, no problem. It's just going to finish up the last of these blocks and uh, not get backed up. So that's awesome because it's a really simple fix. It just, uh, otherwise, it's kind of a pain. you got to use filters or some other way, right? And uh, that does it really simple. But uh, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. I'm pretty happy with the uh, progress. I am going to move this block, just find a home. This thing can literally go anywhere because we're using wireless power. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get that done. Anyway, I am going to wrap this one up here. So, as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. It's much appreciated. I want you guys all have a good one. I'll see you guys next video. Later.